the key of revenge. At some time or another, nearly all writers of detective fiction have used the theme of poison needle in their macabre plots. Actually, the poison needle trick is as old as the ages of man's deliberate designs upon his fellow humans. However, in the Middle Ages, this form of mayhem was created to fantastic lengths and remained for a merchant in Venice to utilise and transform the poison needle into what is to be the key of death. His merchant's name was Tolero. He conducted a business in a thriving city, Erendric, upon the, about the year 1600. He was not a native of Venetian. Having come from the hills, one of the hill towns in inland, to build fame and fortune to the metropolis of that day, being a stranger in the town, he was not readily received by the circle in which he tried to move the chief popularity in the city of Canals. In that day, merchants had to be in business quite a time before they were recognised socially. For even then, even then, Social creatories were restricted to native Venetians. It is virtually impossible for any, for one from another city considered a foreigner to break down the ironclad barriers. Trevolo was either unaware of this state of affairs or conceited enough to be disinterested. At any rate, he had an eye for at the most beautiful young lady for whom the great city was renowned. He decided to pay court to one of the prettiest and socially prominent belles. He is probably the shortest courtship in the records of the day. The bash Trevolo had no sooner met the lady of his choice, he proposed marriage, but being she being already engaged to a young gentleman, high estate refused him point blank. Trevolo flew into a towering rage, swearing she would regret her would a rejection of his offer, and that some day she would be glad to marry him. Maddened by the rebuff, Trebolo retreated to his workshop, laboured in the small hours of the night, manufacturing for, him, manufacturing for himself a foldable weapon of vengeance, a large key, and of this massive instrument turned easily and disclosed life spring, which, when pressed, sent for the other end of the key a steel needle so fine would enter the flesh of the victim and bury itself there, but leaving the slightest internal trace. It was a diabolically clever instrument of murder, and Trebolo churned with recall as he patiently bided his time and counted the days to the date that it was to be signalised the marriage of the girl who had so aroused his amnesty by jilting him. At last, a fateful day arrived, and Trebolo gleefully completed his vengeance. These were days of palaboli and magnificence, of eight decorations and brilliant rituals, a bridge from one of the fairest families, extremely popularity, a groom to be was a silicon of royal sorority. In view of this, it was indeed a grand occasion. The streets were cleaned and hung with burning along the way in the wedding procession. 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 Pelates of the highest rank awaited the happy couple at the church where there was crowded inside out with relatives, friends, and all spectators would give. Spectators would get, gain elbow room for the spectacle. But the bride was not the object of Trebolo's affection. It was the young man of her choice. It was a word upon him that Tablo proposed to wreak his vengeance. Ambassy perceived his edge to close the room. A latter entered the great portal of the church. In a pressing crowd, no one knew what had happened. So quick, amid the bustle and excitement, Tablo gave a swift turn his wrist, sent the lethal needle into the young man's chest, seized with a sharp pain. A bridegroom collapsed before the nuptials commenced. Obviously, it's too serious a condition to proceed. They so carried home, happy ceremonies postponed, much whispering and conjecture by assembled populace. The best physicians of Venice were called in, but they could do nothing for the victim. Come hours, he was dead. What is, what is more, the physicians wise 
to all the ills of the day, who were completely lost, diagnosed as strange as sudden illness, which has so seriously struck down the young man in his prime of, of, his, of life. The scheming Treblo lay low for some time, for to let the matter pass over, he somewhat forgotten. When he felt the way he was clear again, for him to renew his suit, he made a formal visit to the palace of Bedarid by the family, and once again asked the maiden's hand in marriage. Once more he refused. When he took his apartment, Treblo's countenance was serene, but inside his black heart was thieving with vexation. Behavior plans for e- f- further vengeance. He did not take long to materialize. In a short, few short days, both parents, girl, died suddenly and oddly. A man of death was the same, and it, same which had seized upon them, almost son-in-law, a few months previously. The fact in itself excited considerable suspicion upon its discovery. Physicians agreed to perform autopsies on another. Of both the bodies. This time the investigation bore fruit. Within a small steel needle, chipped with dirty poison, was found in the flesh. Both victims. Three murders are cleared up. They are, these three main mysteries are cleared up. They are all murders. A wave of a panic and gulf Venice in those days. Poison was a frequent medium of vengeance. Everyone began thinking who were these enemies and wondering. Where death would strike next, people were interested in worrying about the personal welfare. No one thought of connecting Tenebo with the crimes. Apparently, his earlier threat to the young lady had been forgotten. A seeming sighted that spread over the excitement of the city passed by, passed him by. He went about his business with all the outward show of honest businessman, the acronym of respect and propriety. After the demise of her parents, the victualled damsel sought solace and refuge in a convent on the outskirts of Venice, declaring to all her friends he would not come out to a period of mourning was concluded. Terrible, and declared self-control with all his might, but even his imperious soul could stand without her no longer. <coughs> <coughs> he made his way to the convent, spoke earnestly to the guardian at the gate. Soon there was a knife calling at his heels outside, but a consolation within the depths of the building debated at the matter of his visit. Consolation, consolation, within the depths of the building debated the matter of his visit. After a while, he was, got his answer that the young lady agreed at the meeting. After all, she must have been fault, and I endure with a strange greeting, allowing for convert, conservation. Conservation, conserv- conservation, conserv- conserv- conservation, and we're merely, we're merely seeking that each other's voice, seeing of each other's faces, could, would be between them, and she would have no clothes to conduct this man who had professed her so lengthily. Once and for all, the girl decided to rid herself of her retreating to the bolo. Uh, she approached the gate from the inside, her bolo's face lit up. Expectation. At the time, he was sure that success would crown his pleas. And the girl, a lady on whom he was extraordinarily fastened his, his eyes, would finally capitulate and give him his ha- a hand in marriage. His spirit soon fell in complete sin again. He began the gate, as, we, as through the gate, he told him off, bending a spite in language, showing an utter disgust and contempt, burning him never to come here again. His furiated to a burrow, a point of medical chronicle frenzy. He burst a furious tirade against her. Alarmed, she drew back. Before he had touched her, the huge cree he'd always carried on his belt. In excitement of the argument, he, she killed nothing at the time. She called the gatekeeper, had an angry man chased off the property. It was not until after she returned to the room, she felt a pain in her arm and looked down. She saw her blood. As the undue relation of Stablo's secret dawned upon her, she sought immediate help, and good and the good nuns of the convent hastily called a surgeon. Gail, remembering the circumstances of the mysterious deaths of her financier and her parents, direct, directed the 
that the cut is cut into a spot where Bird had appeared. The surgeon did this at once and discovered a needle which he extracted. Fortunately, attention given a wound was in time. Gale's life has saved. The authorities have ne- upon being informed of that their happenings lost no time, took Turnabo into custody. Immediately he made a thorough search his house and shop. Then they, when they discovered the key, examined the diamantic mnemonics mechanism, culprit was no recourse but to confess. Justice was swift and shortly the arrogant swain who let his heart rule his head soon found himself dangling from the scallows. <laughs>